Hey everyone, welcome to the booth at Createx Colors. Today we're going to do a little how-to on a gaming faceplate for a controller. And uh, I'm going to use our UVLS product line throughout this whole process. So I'm actually going to use the UVLS as my adhesion promoter, my first coat. I'm going to use it as a mixing additive for my color coat. And I'm actually going to use that again for my top coat once the product's all done. So stick around, we're going to show you a little how-to. Okay, so we're ready for step one. Uh, for this, I'm going to use my TH2, my Iwata TH2. It's a great little gun for this. Um, I went ahead and reduced my 4050, my gloss UVLS clear. Uh, I went about 20% because we are spraying through a smaller tip size. A little bit more reduction is necessary. 20-25% uh, is right in the sweet spot to spray through something small. So I'm going to actually put a coat on here just as an adhesion coat, a little medium tack coat. So we're going to go ahead and spray that right now. to do is just see a little bit of a shine on the surface of this grip and this controller cover. Before I started I actually went ahead and I prepped it with a gray scotch pad and a little bit of a, a prep paste, a little bit of soap and water and it's clean and ready to go. So that's coat number one. We'll probably do two coats and we'll call it a day. Okay, so we got one coat on here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a second coat only because I'm trying to put this on as minimal as possible. A medium coat is, is more than enough. So I'm just going to do a second coat for coverage. And I also want to touch on the fact this is a TH2, so that's a 0.6 uh, nozzle and needle combo. So uh, we really don't want to see you guys spray the UVLS product line with anything smaller than that. It's really more of a spray gun, small air, you know, large airbrush, small spray gun product. Uh, 0.5 is really the smallest we want you to, to spray it through, just because of the fact that it atomizes better and uh, you really get better coverage and performance of the product through that. So this is my second coat. You can see I'm really just kind of dusting it on, looking for that nice, even, uniform finish. I'm going to let this dry up for about 10 minutes and I'm going to get to my color. Hey guys, it's been about 15 minutes, uh, we're ready to go. Uh, I have my color now mixed and I went ahead and splashed a little bit of 40-50 in that as well. Like I said, I use that as my mix additive. So I did about 25, 20, 25% 40-50 in with my color. And uh, this color actually gives the most effect over black. So you'll actually see that, it's gonna look pretty cool. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put one coat on and see how that looks. Again, it's a great thing about this gun is the control you have for doing little projects like this. I'm just dusting it on. I don't know if you can see that. It's starting to get a little bit of color change there. That's one coat. So we'll let that dry. Same thing, about 10, 5, 10 minutes. Uh, and we're going to do a second coat. Okay, guys, we're back. Uh, I did uh, just about three coats um, of that chameleon color. You can see I was really spraying it dry, so it's like two and a half, really. Just enough to fog material on. You don't want to overly wet it. Um, what I did was I took our next color, which is a little bit of our Candy 2O Tealicious, and I mixed that back in with the clear that I used for the adhesion promoter. So I probably about maybe 15, 20% into that clear that's already reduced. And I switched to my round pattern cap on my TH. And now I'm just gonna go back and fog in the edges of this just to give a little bit of shape and shadow dimension to the bottom of this controller. And darken up those edges. I'm just gonna blow a little bit of color on, keep going around this until I'm happy with how that looks. We're gonna let that dry up for about an hour and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna top coat this with some more 4050 UVLS gloss. Okay guys, we're back, it's been about an hour. Uh, everything is totally dry, our candy is dry and I'm gonna finish off this project uh, with, again, some more 4050. So we opted for the gloss finish, the 4050 uh, UVLS gloss. Um, and one thing I wanted to touch on also is I put candy down here just to burn the bottom edges uh, of this uh, cover. 
and I'm not gonna have to worry about the 4040 bleed checker only because A, I mixed the candy with the 4050, so there's a little more bleed resistance because of the 4050, and B, I'm actually just going right to top coat. I'm not going over it with another color or anything like that where, where bleeding might be an issue. So that's why I opted to eliminate that. It was a step for this point because I'm gonna top coat this and finish it. We don't need to use the 4040, so we're going right to a clear coat. So I'm gonna show you guys what the first coat looks like right now and this is mixed the exact same way it's just about a hair over probably about 15 to 20 percent 4011 only because i'm spraying it through a, a little bit smaller size brush than a spray gun but nice medium wet coat make sure i wrap my edges let that dry and i'll do coat number two we'll do a total of three coats on this and we'll call it finished Okay guys, we're back. It's actually the second day of this project. We did three coats of the clear. We let that sit overnight. We noticed that there's a little bit of, there's some, some dust and some dirt in the clear. So because it's such a small piece, we really don't want to have to sand and buff it. So we actually opted to do what is traditionally called a flow coat. So we let it sit overnight. I came in this morning, hit this with a little bit of 800 just to give it a little scuff and level the surface. I'm gonna do two coats over the top of that and we're gonna be able to walk away and call it done. Now sanding the clear in between actually allows it to lay a lot flatter because now I'm not going over any texture of the paint. I'm actually just going over smooth clear. So it'll allow this to be a lot flatter right out of the gun, nice and smooth. Actually, the way this looks right now, I think I'm just gonna do one coat, all that done and walk away. We'll let that dry up and this project will be finished. Okay guys, so here it is. This is the finished piece. We, uh, I put two more coats of clear over the clear that I did sand. And I actually just hit this with a little bit of polish, a medium cut polish with no uh, uh, wet sanding at all. It was just a polish, just to bring up the shine a little bit more. And uh, you can see here, we got that color shift. It goes from a, almost a hunter gray to a, a, a cobalt blue and a little bit in between. So we're really happy with how this came out. You can kind of see a little bit of that fade at the bottom with that uh, tealicious candy, just to darken, you know, burn the edge a little bit. So. It looks great. This is under natural light in the booth and actually we're going to take it outside and give it in a little bit of direct sunlight and it actually has a completely different look. So we'll go outside and check it out. All right guys, so here we are outside. We got lucky. We have a lot of sunshine. You can see what I was talking about. This is a totally different color outside in the sun. It is extremely vibrant and you can really see that flake. Uh, I don't know if you can get a close up on this or not. I'll try, but it might not show up, but you can still see the one and two and the little tick marks that go around this controller. And that was the beauty part of using our 4050 as our adhesion promoter. Because it's clear, it allowed all those little details to show through. And this color is very transparent as well. So we were able to kind of keep that factory look, but give it that custom touch. So we're gonna get this together and uh, completely assembled. And we'll give you guys a final shot. So thanks for checking us out.